Everybody, it's Invicta. It's time for a Tainted Keeper run here, the Binding of Isaac Victor Repentance series. Happy Wednesday, Mosh Pit. Yeah, I felt like just playing the Tainted Keeper because it feels like it's been forever since we actually played as him. We're still waiting for another video to cross 3,000 likes, so if you want to help support the channel and make it happen, then make sure you click the like button on this video and all the other videos that you see here on the channel. It's the best way to support myself. It's totally free and takes less than a second to do. It helps out a great deal. So here's your picture of the day submitted here by Fragile Puppy 4 Title of the thread was, You've seen doggos and cats how about a bunny and yeah i gotta say that this is definitely the first bunny in the mosh pit they also went on to say in the thread bean and i tuning into another sinvicta run so shout out to fragile puppy four and bean that definitely looks like a bean to me if i if i had to name a rabbit i'd name that one bean thank you very much fragile puppy all right let's hop on in here to this painted keeper run it's been it's i feel like it's been forever and we started with oh good we get Curse of the Tower from Eden's Blessing. I forgot that we had Eden's Blessing yesterday. Go back eight, Charlie three, Charlie, Charlie, X-Ray, Papa. So this is going to be uh, terrifying because now we have a situation where if we take hits, if we take hits, we got to get that money real quick. Otherwise, we're going to explode, kind of like that right there, and then we're going to be subject to Curse of the Tower just everywhere. Um, so, yeah. Needless to say, we're going to be looking for a reroll very early on here. Um, but Tainted Keeper, of course, is one of my favorite, if not my favorite Tainted character to play in all of Isaac. Um, superb stats that you start off with, of course, is also great to have the uh, quad shot. Definitely looking forward to trying to get... I mean, Brain Worm honestly isn't too bad here, but also getting... Uh, I definitely want the luck upgrade for sure. Definitely want uh, Blue Cap as well. Now... You do have to worry about, of course, Tainted Keeper's HP because he, he can only have two and only two unless, of course, he gets a Strength card or gets Mom's Kiss. That is the only other ways that you can actually increase his uh, his HP, not even through Greed's Gullet or something like that. It will not increase it uh, by more than two. So at least I think that that's true. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, so Strength card here. There we go. So if we get in trouble, we can at least use the Strength card. And, uh, you know, there is a... There was... A time where I thought the Tainted Keeper was going to be a little bit too dangerous to play. Um, you know, frequently anyway. But once you realize that Tainted Keeper, he, his most important stat, and this kind of goes on to the question of the episode from last week, which I guess I'll just go ahead and, and read it out here on the first floor. Um, uh, once you realize that one of his most important stats is not actually like his damage or tears, but it's actually his movement speed, then you start to unlock the mindset of how to play Tainted Keeper properly, in my opinion. Um, being able to move around and get those, get the coins as fast as possible is extremely, extremely important. More so than other characters, because not only does your life depend on it, literally, but also you, the items that you get are highly dependent on as well, because obviously money is what makes this character go around. So, being able to accurately and quickly move around the room and grabbing money as, as fast as you can without let it without letting it expire will not only keep you safe but also just make you accumulate more money which means you're going to be getting better items which means you're going to have safer runs which means you're going to be getting better runs and just overall more fun um so once you really get into that mentality of a tainted keeper player then you know you start to you start to understand just how good this character really truly is so obviously we don't care about lunch. We're going to go back here and go grab Blue Cap because I do want Tears Up. Um, we can also pick up Brain Worm too. I mean, there's no reason not to. Um, obviously the Sacrifice Room is a little bit uh, suboptimal. As Tears Ups are good. I mean, we could get, if we really, really wanted to, I guess we could get Sack Dagger as well. Glitter Bombs is not a terrible pickup either because obviously with, with um, Curse the Tower... If we do get hit, there are the, there is the potential for us to actually get uh, money back um, from all those glitter bombs, but that's kind of that's a little bit of a gamble because it depends on us getting hit a lot. That yeah, going on to last week's question of the episode, and it's something that uh, I just alluded to. How important do you value movement speed in this game? Do you think that I put too much emphasis on it, or do you value it even more than I do? Um, it was a really, really good discussion. Lots of people replied to it. 
on last Wednesday's episode. The most upvoted comment came in from a young V1 who said, like you always say, oh, I got to move OBS because I can't read the window. Like it, like you always say, it's one of the make, or, make it or break it stats. Low movement speed kills a beginner faster than any other stat IMO. I did have one glorious Maggie run with 0.6 movement speed where I whoop beast butt. I mean, yeah, there's going to be those outliers, right? And of course, Maggie is very, very slow, but overall, yes. Low movement speed, it's not necessarily as dangerous as like Bad Tears is, but it's almost as dangerous, I would say. Um, so thank you very much, Young V. The second most upvoted comment came in from uh, CZH2432, who said, I value it somewhat high, uh, but to a beginning player or even an advanced one, too much movement speed can kill you as fast as too little movement speed. And I, again, I sort of agree with that to a certain extent. Um, you know, I talk about it a lot. When we talk about the the clown physics and the fact that, you know, if you do get too much movement speed, Isaac kind of gains this really weird Mario like momentum that like just carries his it just carries him forward. Um, and that's something that you have to be really, really careful of. And, you know, so that's why I say my sweet spot for movement speed. My sweet spot for movement speed is always between one point five five and one point seven. Um, I think that is the safest amount of movement speed that you can have in the game while still being mobile enough to be effective at killing stuff while also dodging things. Get a very lucky dime there, and wow, these are quite terrible. Um, one bomb possibly gets us 10 cents, so absolutely want to do that. And oh, okay. Well, well, counterfeit penny is very good. Uh, moving box is definitely something that... Yeah, it's definitely something. Um, there's not another bomb in there. We obviously don't want farting babies. So let's go in. Let's go into the boss room and let's see what we can get. It's gonna be old Dookie. Old Dookie's not gonna have, have too easy of a time against us. Gotta be careful. That was a little bit of a risky maneuver there. I thought maybe I could get a little bit of cheeky damage on old Dookie with a sack dagger before he got away, but it turns out we did not. There we go. There we go. We got to go Incubus here for sure. Multi-dimensional baby is not really going to matter on this one here, but I mean, having the double shot of Incubus is so, so strong. Um, honestly, I just think we just go to, well, no, 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 no. Let's not be lazy about this. Let's go clear this floor because more so than any other character, Tainty Keeper is above all else profitable when it comes to, okay, that's funny game. Never mind. You know what? I'm just to ignore what I'm going to say. We're just going to head on down to the next floor. You can you can thank you can thank the game for ruining that one. That one that one was ruined by the game. Ruined by repentance. Hey oh. And lastly, the third most upvoted comment came in from William Whitaker2817, who said, I really started to just realize how important the stat is when I realized I die far less often the more mobile I am. Yeah, that's a that's a good way, a good, a good new player way of looking at it. Um, which is why, you know, I try to make I try not to make too big of a deal out of out of points that I'm trying to make because I don't want it to sound sensationalized or anything. But I do know what I'm talking about. Most of the time. Not all the time, of course, but most of the time. See, this is what this is when Curse of the Tower gets scary. Is when it blows up, and then we have infinite things to worry about. So I can't believe we actually got we had enough movement speed to get that uh, that nickel there. Bit of a tricky dodge. Fortunately, this is just a big nothing burger of a room because we can't pick up anything. But yeah, Curse of the Tower is not something you ever want to willingly take unless if you have Pyromaniac. Um, especially, especially on the Keeper. <laughs> Especially, especially, especially if you're on Tainted Keeper. Because um, you're just compounding your your danger by infinite. Infinite amounts. So we got a solid foundation set up here with Incubus and, uh, and Quad Shot. Now all we really need to do to start popping off is get a really strong tier effect. I'm thinking Eye of Belial. I'm thinking Jacob's Ladder. Any kind of piercing shot would do. Um... You know, even uh, I, I would I wouldn't even say Dead Onion would be fantastic for us. So we're really, really, really hoping that we get something good 
Dead Eye would also be another one. Dead Eye is not necessarily like a crazy good tier effect for us with quad shot. It's just good overall. I honestly would really prefer to have Ayabalaya would be my number one get right now. If I could pick one item, like if we got death certificate right now, other than Sacred Heart, I would well and nine lives. I would take uh I would take Ayabalaya. Okay, Holy Mantle as well. Oh my goodness. Tractor Beam. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this may, if, at first glance, this may seem like a very peculiar maneuver. Um, Nun's Habit doesn't do anything for us. But the reason why I'm kind of stoked about Tractor Beam is because, if you notice, all of our, all of our shots have now turned into this, the singular beam of damage. And what this means is that we can now, our, all of our damage is compacted, right? And, and it's focused. Now this includes Incubus' damage. So instead of us hitting with one tier in one spot, we're hitting we're hitting with four tiers, technically eight tiers in one spot. And that is a massive amount of damage. Especially, especially if we start getting those tier effects that I'm hoping for. And look at the knockback here from Pisces. I mean, Chubb can't do anything. She is hopelessly, hopelessly pinned against the side there. Absolutely what movement speed. I just talked about how important movement speed is on this character. Strength card is really, really, really important. I'm going to take Nun's Habit as a, as a future proofing measure here. And I am going to go into the mob trap room. The reason why I want to go for the strength card is just because it is so extremely valuable. It can be an actual lifesaver. So what I might do is I might just use the Ace of Diamonds on like a lot of like a really annoying wave like this one here. Ace of Diamonds. You see this sort of this really concentrated beam of damage that I was talking about. That's what Tractor Beam Tractor Beam does. Um, no pun intended there, but it, that's what it does. Uh, it gives you like the focused fire ability is just so strong. And the fact that it also combines with Incubus's damage, like the tiers, is absurd. Because now we essentially are firing eight tiers instead of one. Well, let's not get cocky now. Everything in, that I've shown, everything I've talked about, Taney Keeper, he's extremely fragile. Not a character that you can just sit back and relax and just, you know, have a cup of tea or biscuits or whatever. You're gonna have to. You have to really just pay attention. Um, he is not a character that I will say that you. I mean, obviously, he's he's a lot of fun to play, obviously. Um, but it's not a. Oh, we're just gonna face roll everything and and not have to worry about stuff. Fun. It's a. You get what you put out of it. Fun, uh, or you get what you put into it. I should say fun. Um, you know, you actually have to literally build the character with money with uh you know whatever preferred items you want and honestly he's a great teaching tool for for teaching that uh, item prioritization as well go for smug or something give us a little bit of pseudo mapping here tammy's head is a little bit less appealing to me we get a little bit of light mapping from Blunker helm oh my goodness must must had no clue what was happening there he was she was Again, like Chubb, she was very confused as to how she could handle the situation. We've seen there even a little bit of mobility increase that we got from Wooden Spoon is just enough for us to grab a little bit of extra coins here and there. You know, we have the counterfeit penny that's going to it's going to just be hugely important for us. They're fine. Now, remote detonator is not going to affect Curse of the Tower, unfortunately. Um, Curse of the Tower will still go off and it will still blow up regardless of what we do. But one thing we can do, though, is use our bombs for more an offensive strategy. If we wanted to, we could place a bunch of bombs down on the ground. As long as we have the remote detonator and then just simply, like, you know, unload and that'd be it. Of course, the downside, as you're seeing here with Pisces, is that the clown physics goes absolutely ballistic in this game has no clue how to handle any sort of knockback whatsoever when it comes to floating enemies. So be very, very cautious about that.
Yeah, black rune. I mean, we can use it if we end up not getting anything that we care about. Nice. Lucky pennies are very, very important. Getting those extra procs from the counterfeit penny. Getting those extra procs uh, from uh, getting like nickels and dimes and stuff. So look at that. Cardio coin going ham here. Yeah, options is great. I will take M and uh, sure. We'll take Pageant Boy just so it doesn't show up again. Almost made money back on that. Now, dropping the counterfeit penny is, it's, it hurts. Um, but potentially we can roll into something pretty amazing here with, uh, with M. That's what I'm hoping will happen. And what I should be doing is I should be at least picking cardio coin up with, if we're going to, if we're going to go with M, which we shouldn't, but if we are going to go with M, then uh, we need to get as much as we can with the counterfeit penny, which we did. Uh, let's bomb the keeper here just so we have a better chance to get a devil deal. So what items are we looking for with M now? Well, honestly, we stop on the Book of Shadows. The, the, buck, the buck stops there with the, bu the Book of Shadows. The book stops there with the Book of Shadows. Because then we have a... I mean, all bets are off then. Because then we have Invincibility. We've got Sack Dagger. You know, we've got tons of damage that we can still lay out with Incubus and this Focus Fire that we've got with the uh, Tractor Beam. The Guppy's Eye. I mean, I'll take Guppy's Eye and Bloody Gust. I, I guess a Vengeful Spirit. I don't really care about Rotten Baby, to be honest. And... I was really hoping that we we're going to get some use out of this out, out of this black rune, but again, the strength card, it is just too important, man. So, there's a neat trick that I learned a while ago. Um, I just kind of stumbled upon it while while we were doing... I think I was doing Tainted Keeper Unlocks. And that's how long ago it was. There's a really awesome trick that you can do with the Strength card. So, hypothetically, let's say that you... Let, let's say that you took 9 lives, okay? And so you're down to 1 HP, because that's what happens when you take 9 lives on Tainted Keeper. If you have a Strength card, and then you use the Strength card on yourself, when you leave the room... When you leave the room, you will maintain that HP bonus that you got from the strength card because the maximum amount of HP that you can get on the keeper is two. And the game looks at that and says, hey, wait a second, that's an empty heart container. Why do you have that? And if you fill it up, guess what? You get to keep it. So now, whether or not that's changed or not, I don't know because um, it's been a while since we've actually had to do something like that. But it is a very that is the reason why I put a lot of emphasis on the strength cards um, as Tainted Keeper. A little bit of extra money there. We finally get to go in a curse room, and it was totally not worth it. I don't actually know where that... Where that, uh... I don't know where that, that demon went. I put mom's key there. Do not want sticky bombs. That is a surefire way of dying. So we didn't find the item room. Okay, let's just go fight. Let's go fight the boss now. Let me brownie. This is not an easy boss. We're getting that, those extra tears there from the... Uh, from the headless torso is really nice and uh yeah take synth oil is good damage there now i will say that placenta is not a terrible one either on tainted keeper the regen the regen um effect it does work on coins for tainted keeper 
So it is possible to regen all of your health just from sitting around and waiting. Um, which is not my preferred way to play, but if you have to do it, you know, you, you do what you got to do to win. Nice dime sound there, and absolutely we'll take analog stick as this is going to be a, just another tears up for us. Not a massive one, but still it's something. And uh, we still have a little bit of time here. Maybe we can get a little bit of extra, extra money. Where's the tower so bad? Okay, so we we did not get a double deal. But if we do a full clear now, we can get a double deal. Although I just used my last bomb like an idiot. So this is me hedging my bets and saying that I don't care about... I don't care about boss rush because we've got the golden teleporter that will that will take us into the devil deal and then eventually the I'm error room, which could be also very powerful on Tainted Keeper. So we've already been into both secret rooms, which is good. We just need to go to the rest of the rooms now. So the question is, do we get rid of M? It's a tough ask to get rid of M. It really is. We don't have to do this room. We just have to simply walk in there. If we want to get into the I am error room, we have to get rid of M. Or at least drop it, but then but then you know we lose it anyway. I don't know how the golden teleporter would be all that beneficial to the keeper past one room. Or past one floor, I mean. Um it's not like we have holy mantle and we need to reset it like the lost or something like that. So is is it really worth giving up all of our spacebar rerolls with? Now we can also get something like Genesis with uh, with M. So this is guaranteed to take us to the Devil Deal. Let's go. Let's go to the Devil Deal first. We'll make our decision then. Damocles is is literally useless as as Tandy Keeper. Now Brimstone Bombs, on the other hand, is not necessarily useless here. We can go to the I am error room. Oh man. We would have to we would have to do the mob trap room, which is not a huge deal. You know, the I am error room, it does give us an opportunity to get more items, so that's how I'm going to look at it. We do have Nun's Habit, too, so... Oh, my God. That's why I wanted Brimstone Bomb, so we're just going to go ahead and rip it. Wow. That is a lot of extra money there. Our Reverse Cherry card is also pretty nice. You know what? Give me a Reverse Chariot. We get the full card immediately, but I don't really need it. Trying to just trying to get a penny here, game. Thank you. Let's go check out our item room real quick. I can't, like, words cannot express how terrifying and bad it is to have, uh, have Curse the Tower on Tainted Keeper. Real bad. It's, like, wow bad. Um, if we intend to use the Golden Teleporter, we have to, oh my goodness. We have to go into the Curse Room. Although, the glowing hourglass is extremely important as well. I would say it's even more so important than the glowing hourglass. Give us the D6. Are you kidding me? Playoffs. Uh, 
I'm gonna stick with the I'm gonna stick with the the glowing hourglass because it is the smartest move here. We are not like balling out of control status yet on this run. It is quite funny seeing brimstone bombs just absolutely wreck everything. And I will take, I mean, I'll absolutely take the uh, broken onk just in case the unthinkable happens. At least we have a little bit of forgiveness factor there. Honestly, the chariot card's probably better than the reverse chariot. Um, now, you may see a little bit of a, a little bit of a strategy forming here. We managed to get D six. If we do manage to get the D six, uh, you know that potentially could be kind of pog. We could re-roll this this secret room. Let's see how much money it takes us to get D six. And let those explode because I don't want to forget about them and accidentally walk into them like an idiot. We get five cents back. I'm fine with that. Now we have the D sizzle and we also have a full charge ready to go for this item pedestal inside of the secret room. Just not accessible here. Black Lotus does nothing for us, unfortunately. So I'm going to I'm going to really try hard here to get another full charge, which we should be able to do with the D6. And that's a full charge, but like I definitely want Dumpy for sure. Well, Dumpy going to give us a little bit of extra defense. Like that combined with the glowing hourglass should be very, very, very strong in terms of keeping us alive. Of course. If you're wondering how come we're moving so fast and because our, our tears rate is so high, it's because of bloody gusts. We've taken lots of damage on this floor. I mean, echo chamber. Echo chamber allows us to get some good use out of quality cards. Um, I don't believe that it is something that is going to be super beneficial unless we get an Emperor card or a Justice card. We dropped that Strength card in this floor. No, that's a Fool card. Yeah, we got rid of it. Okay. Strength card will also be pretty huge, but... Could try going for marbles, uh, but we have a we got a devil deal coming up. Let's let's put some money away in our donation machine so we're at. Okay, a little bit more than I wanted to put in, but that's fine. Eternal heart in there. Okay. Look at that beam of damage there. Huge time damage. And I have Belial. Oh, baby. Now that feels good. That does feel good. We're not invincible, but we're looking very strong now.
That is a huge, huge, huge upgrade. We can hit this. To our DPS. Like, massive, massive upgrade. One bomb for a whole bunch of bombs, but it's not really worth it, in my opinion. There's a tinted rock over there. Not that it really matters for uh, Tainted Keeper. It's always good to be able to spot them, you know? So money is still going to be very important, um, which again, that's the only the only real questionable move so far that I would say is dropping the counterfeit penny. It is just so strong for Tainted Keeper. But at the same time, uh, you know, hindsight's always 2020. We always talk about that. Um, I think that, I think that the, the counterfeit penny is one of the best for Tainted Keeper. He's not the best. It's one of the best. Flies there. Tinted Rock up here. Surprised me to get more flies. Actually, that was a retaliatory hit by the Blood Clot that uh, Dumpy saved us on. You little Dumpy. My Conquest is a... This is an item that... Conquest Pony is an item that I wouldn't mind on Tainted Keeper if we didn't have the Glowing Hourglass. <laughs> These hairballs are second guppy item. Okay, so we're still looking okay. I mean, the flying and movement speed's good, but it's 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 not stronger than undoing damage. Check for a claw machine in here. There is none. So what's really nice about having the Splunker's Helm is that we can use it for what I like to call pseudo-mapping. And essentially, all you have to do is look at the map and see where does the... It can see up to two rooms ahead of you. So as long as you see a continuation of any kind uh, on your map, like you're like we're seeing right now, that means that we're going in the right direction. Or at least a direction that is not leading to a, to a, uh, a dead end. Now, if we see that end, then obviously, you know, there's... We, we know that it's... Well, it's ending. Um, left hand is... I, I like having the... I like having the little backup... The backup life from the Broken Onk just in case if something bad happens. Sun card, that's absolutely worth using for uh, Echo Chamber. And as you see, we are going in the world's longest and furthest Isaac Circle that you could possibly imagine. But now with Echo Chamber, this essentially means that we can just simply... We have mapping for the foreseeable future anyway, as long as we have a tarot card to use. A luck upgrade and a soul heart, which turns into attack flies. Right now, Echo Chamber has, uh, has the sun card. Anytime we use a pill, anytime we use a rune, anytime we use a card, it's going to, again, use a sun card, which is, again, again, very nice. Dingo was a little bit, a little bit shooketh there. Don't really have to worry about collecting money anymore since they're at 99 cents. We killed the eye lasers faster than she could spawn the other two, and yeah, mom's just dead. Ooh. That bomb near the devil deal would have hit us. This is a classic example of why I don't like Eden's Blessing, by the way. Because, yeah, everyone harps on, like, oh, you know, it can help you. Yeah, it can also very easily harm you. Very, very easily harm you, and it almost killed us right there. If I didn't hit the glowing hourglass, or if we had gotten rid of the glowing hourglass, we would be sitting at a at a dead keeper right now. I mean, that bomb was one fraction of a tenth away of of going off. It goes greed. Steam sale doesn't matter at this point, so it's a funny joke game. 
Pro. What is this? You want to see clown physics? Here you go. This is clown physics 101 right here. This is the problem with Pisces. Oh, it's not really Pisces fault. It's just the engine the game does not know what physics are. Like I said, having knockback of any kind just makes this game just, oh, and use the death card just so we get mapping from our sun card and it shows that we are going indeed in the correct direction. Really hate that we can't hit these guys right now. Follow Penny is the best trinket in the game for Tainted Keeper, period. It gives you a chance to get a penny every time you take hits. Um, it can sometimes spawn one, sometimes not. But the point is that it gives you the opportunity to recover the HP if you lose it. And that is the single... That is the only trinket you really look for as, as Tainted Keeper. That and Piggy Bank are very, very good. I think in conjunction with what we've got with Glowing Hourglass, we should be pretty much Gucci. gonna get another judgment every and as soon as I use this chariot card which I'm not planning on using it until we need it mission card we need it at this point we're gonna I mean we can spawn another judgment if I really wanted to we get an emperor card which is fantastic So I'm not going to worry about using the Emperor card here because it's only just, it's only like there. <laughs> we have to go to for Isaac. But obviously we can use it on Blue Baby and now we don't have to worry about mapping at all. We can simply just go to the boss and call it a day. According to Dumpy, we're going to get hit there. I don't know about that one, Dumpy. Very close beam there. Now, for all that said uh, that we've done on this on this run here, our movement speed really is not ideal. We're still relatively slow compared to of where I'd like to be fighting Isaac on Tainted Keeper. And he goes here. We don't don't care about perfection. We just we've we've got the swallow penny, and that's going to be our ticket home. I think. I mean, hopefully we never have to use it. So. Yeah. All these are not good. I mean, they're not terrible, but they're not what we want. Um, I will at least go check this. I'll at least go check to see what's inside of the of the uh, secret room here. Now, we don't have the chariot card, but again, Blue Baby is infinitely easier than Isaac is. Most of the time, anyway. We have to do, we just have to worry about the, the clown physics kicking in. But it doesn't matter. We are going to get the dub here. Just, I, I just want to see what's inside the super secret room, just, just for funsies. So, nice, easy dub. Oh, man, that would have been nice to have early on. On Tainted Keeper, um, other than a couple of close calls, thanks to Curse of the Tower, we. Pass this test with flying colors. So thank you for watching, everyone. It felt great to play Tainted Keeper. I really do enjoy playing him. Let me know your thoughts on Tainted Keeper down below. Do you like playing him just casually? Is he a character that you try to master, or is he one that you just kind of skip because he's a little bit too dangerous? Post him in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And of course, hope you're staying warm and, uh, yeah, just having a great time with Isaac or any other video game that you're playing out there. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, everyone. As always, I will see you all next time. Until then... So long, everybody.
Thanks for watching this video. I'd like to thank some patrons of mine like Mac, Kaizo Blades, and Oliver Went. If you'd like to have your name read at the end of the next episode, check out my Patreon campaign, which you can find over at patreon.com slash Invicta.